Hello everyone, my name is Dana, I'm 27 years old and I live in Kibbutz near Am, which is right uh, next to Gaza. And um, I thought to just take a few minutes to tell you what it's been like living here these past few days. Um, this isn't a political video, I've never been very strong on political views, but uh, I do know that, that um, you get most if not all of your information from the media. And as we all know, the media uh, tries to, or says they try to be objective, but uh, we know that they can't really do that. And I know um, how Israel is portrayed overseas, and I just want whoever finds this important or interesting to take a few minutes and just listen to what I have to say, because I'm not uh, trying to be elected as president or something, I'm just telling you my story as it is. Just a, so a short recap. Um, the situation in Israel has been going on for about 14 or 15 years. The first few years when we had rockets falling onto us, we didn't even have safety rooms. And, uh, and uh, that means we used to just run to the hallway or the stairs or the toilet and um, usually cover my brother and sister and just wait for the bomb to fall. Hopefully it won't fall on us. Um, we had days in which we had 30, 40 alarms a day or a night. Many times we just got into the car at 1 o'clock in the morning driving to the, a, a farther away city where we could sleep safely for the next three or four hours and just wake up early and go back to school and work. And that was just our daily routine. And then we got uh, the safety rooms, thank goodness I've got one right next to me. And now, uh, supposedly, if the alarm goes off, the Teva Adom alarm, I have about um, 15 seconds to run to the safety room. I say supposedly because I just spoke to my father this morning. I told him, you know, it's not really 15 seconds. It's more like five seconds, maybe. Many times the alarm doesn't even finish going off and uh, already the bomb has fallen. Um, so it's relatively better, but still it's scary in that way. But what I wanted to speak about is what's going on here in Israel for the last um, two weeks almost. Um, I don't know how you see the IDF in the news overseas. I'm sure that many times um, Israel is portrayed as the bad guy. But I know as a citizen, and many times we did have um, negative feelings about this, that the IDF is very, very humane sometimes so humane that they will not bomb a building or, or a car or I don't know what because they know there are children nearby, a hospital nearby and so they will just let a terrorist run free, go dig his tunnel, go shoot his Kassam bomb, whatever, um, just as long as, as the IDF doesn't hurt anyone that is innocent. So I know that many children and, and, um, and women and innocent people have been injured and killed this time around but you have to understand we do not sit here and applaud their deaths it's very tragic for us to see it's very sad for us to see when I hear on the news that a child has died in Gaza it breaks my heart we do not feel happy about that I feel very bad for the people in Gaza who are not in the Hamas, who are innocent. It, it's just a horrible situation to be in. And so it, that was important for me to say that we, we aren't happy about this happening. It's very, very sad. And the IDF and, um, um, and our Prime Minister and everyone always says that they are sorry and it's horrible and no one's proud or happy about that happening. So. So that was important for me to say. Um, up until now, our main threat was the Kassam bombs. And um, somehow we got used to it. Um, we would just go upon our daily routine. When you guys don't hear about us on the news, it doesn't mean the Kassams aren't falling. We have days in which we have 9, 10 Kassams. And even sometimes the Israeli news doesn't speak about it because it's, like, it's not enough, you know, or nothing happened to anyone. Um, I think it's a matter of luck. I think every single bomb that falls should be spoken about in Israel, of course, but also overseas. But I understand that there's lots of important things going on. Anyway, we can deal with the Kassam bombs. We have safety rooms. What I'm afraid of is the 
method that I've been working on for a few years and now it's been starting to, um, they've been st they start to use it now, which is the tunnels. A few tunnels were found um, in the southern area of Israel. And uh, this morning I woke up from um, a Tseva Dom Alarm and um, um, I went to the safety room, I met my family there and after it fell, my father told me that they found a tunnel outside our kibbutz they killed 9 or 10 um, Hamas terrorists that were already out of the tunnel it's a spa I can see it from here, it's a space outside of our kibbutz um, where we go for picnics and stuff um, during February and March there's these beautiful flowers there so people come from all over Israel and they just came out of this hole and started walking around and uh, thank God the IDF saw them and um, and they uh, took care of the problem but um, they have found a way into our homes now and that is scary because now I can't walk around in the kibbutz and just know okay where the, where the closest shelter is and just be aware and awake because now they're just digging their way up from Gaza into our country and it's a whole new threat and it's a very scary threat to walk around your own home and be afraid um, people in our area in the Kibbutzim and in Zderot and Nativot and the, the close cities to Gaza I think we are very strong very optimistic we are happy to live here this place is like heaven it's beautiful a second after the alarm goes off and I hear the, the bomb falling in the kibbutz it's suddenly quiet and I just see the birds and I hear the birds and I see the flowers and it's just like you were on in hell and suddenly you're in heaven on earth because it's really it's surreal how beautiful this place is but you have to understand that us being strong and optimistic does not make the situation right I don't expect you to now change your mind and be pro-Israeli or whatever I just want you to, to take a second and try to think outside of the box try to think outside of what the media is feeding you because the media always picks a side and think about the normal people living here and people in Paris or California or I don't know where just imagine that in your backyard is a tunnel in which 10 Hamas terrorists are coming out of and they want to kill you and they want to kill your family I can't even I can't even comprehend the meaning of this because I've been walking around the whole day trying to be happy listening to music go on and they were they were right here outside of our house so that's all you know I don't like I said I don't expect this video to be you know but um, I would appreciate the time to listen to it to think again before you, you make your very strong political uh, views about Israel I love my country, we have a wonderful country, we have wonderful people I love the IDF, they've been in the kibbutz for a few days and it's fathers and sons and boyfriends and husbands of people and they are dying in this war and it hurts for everyone in the country so next time Israel is portrayed as this heartless monster think of this video think of what we are going through our country is wonderful come and visit us when we are when it's quiet and um, we just want peace that's all so thank you for your time can't believe I cried again but what can you do and uh, let's hope it just ends uh, quickly and and uh, as safely as possible Goodbye.